I'd like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask, is there anyone else recording this meeting? If you please join me in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to move ahead to, oh, actually, citizens' comments. Uh, seeing, seeing none, we will move ahead to student representatives' report. All right. Um, well, as all you know, graduation was on June 6th. Um, I know everyone was crying, students, the teachers, the parents, everyone was crying. So um, it, was a, it was a good night. Uh, also, the Relay for Life happened on last Friday, June 13th. It went from 9 to 4 inside the high school because it was rained out. Um, but it was still a huge success. We had a lot of support. A lot of people came. And students that are still in the high school are currently taking their finals, and their last day is Monday. Very nice. Do you know how much they raised for Relay? I actually don't know. My understanding is they raised $37,000. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Pretty Excellent. Excellent. Especially when they cut it down by five hours, and it was inside. Right. So that was impressive. Excellent. Just a, a quick comment. Uh, fortunately, I was able to attend that, and I have to say, what a, I mean, you have to imagine all these kids in the school, and what a great job, not just the staff, you guys did coordinating everything, and the activities were fantastic, and even though it was shortened, and, and obviously the kids were a little disappointed, they had a great time, and you could feel it. I mean, it was really an energizing day, and uh, I hope it continues, and really yeah. your class, your group did a phenomenal job helping guide that day. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments? We now move on to special recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, as you know, tonight is Nicole's last official meeting with us. She's done a great job. Kyle um, is unable to be here. He's continuing playing baseball. Is it through Legion or one of the yeah. teams? Um, but Nicole is uh, attending UMass Amherst. I had the pleasure of going to the Rotary Scholarship Dinner last night. She was there with her dad being uh, honored. So uh, we thought that we would recognize you tonight with a little cake and wish you well. Oh. And Mrs. Scobie has a um, certificate for you. Oh, thank you. Would you like to come on up, Nicole? That way you could shake hands with all of us and we can thank you for your time. Sure. sure. That'd be great. Thank you so much. You've been yeah. an excellent student representative. Always showing up with a smile, full of information, and we've loved having you. We're going to miss you. Thank you. I knew Nicole when she was very, very little. Very, very young. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I just want to thank you for everything you've done and you yeah. really brought up the school committee more with the, the things you bring into us and taught us what's going on too. You did uh, helped us out a lot. And keep up the good work. Right. Best of luck <laughs> with your future plans. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, good luck next year in school. Real, real quick comment to show you um, <laughs> our student representatives every year that I've been on the committee have been fantastic. Yeah. And last night we were able to right. to speak with one. Uh, that was at an event we were at last night and had to believe that she has graduated from college and still taking a leadership role. So I really think you stepping up and doing this is the beginning of you continuing to basically represent people in your class and you did a phenomenal job this year. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Well, just good luck next year. Thanks. Yes. Great. Yes. Great. Sure. I'll have more ready. <laughs> And Nicole, when the, when, the cake is, when the cake is finished, um, feel free to get an early dismissal. You and our guests have cake tonight, too. I lost that. Thank you. This is like you certainly put in your time, so don't feel like you need to hang around for the whole right. meeting. I can take it to go if you'd like. Oh, no, you can't, you can't leave. <laughs> Thank you. And we need One of the perks, I guess. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should sell it to the audience. Heck, way to get it! Somebody leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sure you'll do excellent at college. No one's yeah. allergic to no. chocolate. No doubt there. Nicole's going to do great things. Yeah. Continue sure. to do great things. I Make sure you come back and let us know. Yeah. Do we need more? Even if it's just shooting okay, uh, Dr. Yeah. Allen email yeah. and she can pass along the information yeah. to us. But we'd like to hear how you're doing. Right. Are you going to surprise us and show up someday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. were you just on it for the one year or was it more than one year that you did this? Uh, no, I just did it senior year. Just senior yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. Very good. And you can tell Kyle that he's in trouble for not being here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you already missed out on this cake, so it's his loss. That's right. <laughs> to take a piece for him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along, let's seek approval for the minutes of the June 4th meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have in attendance with us tonight Mr. Michael Young. He is a math teacher from Auburn High School, and he is seeking your approval to attend a uh, ski and snowboard trip that has now become an annual event up in Killington. Would not actually take place until next March, um, but obviously plans need to be made. So with your approval, I will turn it over to Mr. Young, and he can give a brief update, and then we'll seek your approval of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'm just seeking approval. Last year we went to uh, Sunday River in Maine and we brought about 42 students and we had a very successful trip. All the kids uh, loved it, so we're going to try it again this year. This year we're going to Killington in Vermont. The uh, price per student is about 335 bucks. It'll be totally student funded this year. There's been a request by a lot of the students to try to do some fundraising to try to reduce some of their costs, so we'll work on that in the fall. Um, but about that, it'll be March 6th. We'll leave Friday after school, so we won't miss any school. We'll leave about 3 p.m. and return about 8, 8.30 on Sunday evening, so we'll be back in school on Monday. Okay. Oh, and I think I've given uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, proposal there with all of your information. Yes, very right. good. Yep, absolutely. Thank very well stated. Um, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the AHS Ski Club field trip to Killington Ski Resort in Killington, Vermont on March, in March of 2015. Do I have a second? I would second that. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Name? Thank you very much. Have fun. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. <laughs> The next item, I wanted to make you aware, as you know, the We the People group, of which uh, Nicole and, and Kyle were part, um, Representative Frost is working with Mr. Bonaccio and Mr. Kennard to have a highway sign on uh, 290 erected on this. So I just wanted to keep you apprised. I don't have any further update from that, uh, but I think it would be a nice honor and distinction and well-deserved by the students since they did represent all of Massachusetts. So I will keep you updated. Excellent. That would be excellent. Next, we have Mr. Fahey here to give an update um, briefly regarding schools and fields and summer projects. Um, there is an awful lot that is going on, so he'll give you a, a couple of brief highlights about that. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I know you have a cake every meeting. Huh? <laughs> 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 he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> As Dr. Bunnell stated, it's, it'll be a busy time once again. Uh, we'll be doing our, our group cleaning with all the custodians and all the buildings, uh, going from building to building each week. Uh, as I said before, get a professional set of eyes, not just one or two. We basically have 20 sets of eyes, you know, professionals cleaning the buildings. Along with that, we're going to be uh, I'm happy to report, as the last meeting, uh, we People approved the uh, air conditioning project at the high school. That will be going underway in starting in uh, July. Uh, basically, the majority of the work is on the roof, uh, so it will not affect the summer school program at all. Uh, quarry checks will be done, uh, spots checks, safety meetings. Um, we have an outstanding company 
uh, which the company Lynch is doing the construction. So uh, looking forward to this project, as I'm sure the students are too. <laughs> um, next oh. we have at the high school. <laughs> one year. I missed out. Yeah. <laughs> one year. You'll have to stay one more year. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we could shut it off. <laughs> some energy. I don't think we'd want that. And uh, speaking of energy, as, as you know, uh, we signed a contract with Guardian Energy to uh, upgrade our lighting system as well. Um, parts are on order. Uh, they're slowly coming in now. Uh, the goal is to have that as completed before the summer school starts July uh, 14th. Uh, so it's ongoing. Um, and. Um, you know, busy place. A lot going on at the middle school, doing a lot of painting. Uh, uh, we've been having our custodians do it in-house, uh, after hours. Basically, I have like four more classrooms to do for the ceilings, and that part of the project will be done. Uh, we just received the playground equipment uh, in the back for the, uh, for the new elementary school that's going to be back there. Uh, the DPW did some excavating this past week. Uh, credit's got to go out the way in Bloomcrest. You know, he really puts his heart and soul into making sure the guys come. You know, he does an outstanding job. Mm -hmm. uh, really couldn't do it without him. So we have to report that equipment is in. Uh, they're anticipating to start that project the 30th with the hopes of having it done by the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, with that, I'd like to call up. Uh, Mr. Ringard, you can talk about the, uh, uh, the middle school project. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We will. Uh, actually, we might have some questions for you, Joe. I'd just like to ask you, how are you doing with all your fields and stuff like that, Joe? How's that going? Do you have uh, any like major repairs you need done this year? Or are you pretty well off? Or? No, actually, we've had a pretty good year. Good uh, no, no real problems at all to report. Um, as I said, before, we've had a lot of seams replaced at the high right. school, yep. uh, 240, it's in the back of my head, uh, it's holding up true, uh, warranty is coming to an end, uh, but they're being maintained, maintained well. Uh, we haven't had an issue this year with baseball, they've kept it immaculate, which is a, a credit, I think, to uh, the baseball program that we have. In, uh, uh, it all trickles down. Right, you know, absolutely. You know, the, the other groups see it, they want to do just as good a job. <coughs> And you've seen that this year. You've seen the softball team actually go out and they purchase, uh, you know, draggers. You know, they drag the infield themselves now. So it's nice to see it work. Absolutely. Especially after you had all the problems with the seams and stuff, and now you're, you're moving forward and everything's going well. That's good to hear. Thank you. Are there any other questions from Stay? Just, just a, a comment. Uh, and, you know, obviously you do a fantastic job, and I know you always you know, give credit to your staff and everything else, but, I mean, they're in great shape and you're doing a great job and I just want to make sure with, with you know with Gail and Jess here on the committee um, you know, how valuable you are to the, the district and, and I really thank you you're on top of everything and buildings are looking good especially our older ones that we're going to be taking offline you haven't let them go thank you thank you um, Joe you can have an extra piece of cake Joe, who's going to assemble you. the playground equipment? Is uh, the company be? that we that we purchased from uh, okay. um, Playground Equipment. They're the same company that actually installed all our playgrounds that we have in town uh, probably for the last 10 years. Wow. And the DPW typically does the, the base work for it? Well, actually, they, it's, it's been a, um, in order to make this project go forward, uh, with the funds that we had, um, that those were separate. We would actually have to contract that out. Right. So we're able to to get the best value of, to get the best price. We're able to work with the DPW, take have them do the excavation portion of it, uh, which saved us a lot of money. Now that now the playground company comes in, uh, Dig, Dig Safe has already been notified. They come in, they place it, they set it. Chips come in, we spread it, and uh, we're good to go. So again, Excellent. it's the same company that that we've had throughout the whole town the last 10 years. In fact, the same company did the high school. Mm -hmm. I'd like to um, publicly thank the DPW and ask that anytime they do any small chore for us that you let us know, just send us a note, and Mary Ellen a note, just so we know, just so we can pu publicly thank them, or if we happen to bump into them somewhere, thank them for the, the, the things that they help us out with. That's, 
Yes, Jeff. And I, I think, you know, obviously we have a great working relationship uh, with, with the DPW. And I would like would even say one step further, at, at some point, um, just to look a letter or, or a phone mm -hmm. call of appreciation, mm -hmm. uh, so they know, you know, that we really do appreciate the savings that they're realizing the district and the mm -hmm. town by taking the time to work on these projects for our kids. Absolutely. It's a great uh, reciprocal relationship that we have um, because we're all in this together. So if we can help them to save some money or they can help us, it really works great. And Joe does really yeoman's does. work um, mm -hmm. on, on helping to coordinate and, all of and that. And to a comment on that, there was many times where you would assist us uh, yeah. too on the town side. I know yeah. I was a beneficiary of that on many mm -hmm. occasions. So. It's a great. You know, it is. It is. Yeah. Just what went out there knows this is a great work relationship. Right. It is. Yeah. One hand washes the other, but again, I give credit all to Wayne because there's a guy. You know, didn't even have his lunch the other day because the, you know, the truck was coming, and his worker worker came down. It was, you know. I think normally, we miss those normally little what things. Would, normally, what we'd have yeah. to do is we'd have to hire a rigging company to come in. That would be an added expense. Mm -hmm. So yeah. through their expertise, they they rigged it off themselves, and uh, it worked out well. So it will be. Uh, It'll be a beautiful uh, playground once it's up and running. Looking forward to it. Thank you for bringing Excellent. this to our attention. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the um, school building master plan team. But Mr. Ring got to finish his business, so <laughs> he can get out of here. Maybe catch a ride with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You On your motorcycle? <laughs> 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 Just taking for ice cream. We don't have ice cream at that cake. You just <laughs> we can walk right over there. <laughs> Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, first part of the Swanson Road, as you know, the, the master plan team has been working with the renovations proposed for Swanson Road. The first half of that is, is now set and ready to go. Um, our schedule had always been to work with the different renovations in the building, possibilities in the building, and in the meantime, uh, get the site work under control, the site work being the priority of the of the entire project. So, um, that being said, the site has been designed by Grace Engineering. Uh, it's permitted and approved by the planning board. We're ready to go. Uh, it was approved on the 10th of uh, June, and it's ready to go pending your approval. We um, put it out to bid. We had five bidders. They were all within about 6%, which is uh, pretty good, and it means that the plans were pretty good. The low bidder was J.H. Lynch at 737-500. Uh, a little bit more than we had initially thought, uh, based on the initial sketches that we gave uh, out for estimating back in the fall. But between that time and then once it was actually designed, we added quite a bit of things to it because of the, uh, just because they had to be. Uh, there's an underground filtration system. We ended up having to take out the old uh, septic system. We added a lighting, lighting uh, system to the parking lot. And then when we went to the DCG, there were some gates and sidewalks added there. So anyway, with that said, um, we're confident now that we would like to ask that you approve the J.H. Uh, uh, Lynch as the low bidder. Uh, and then what we will be doing over the next two or three months is looking at the uh, finalizing the work inside the building. And what we're going to do, we think, at, at this point, we think we're going to put it out as a base bid with an alternate for the uh, general office area give us some room that if we get into a, a you know a budget crunch next fall um, we'll have different ways to do it and, and as Joe said there the painting is already being done in-house which is saving a lot a lot of money so by breaking this up into little pots I think we're you know we should be fine so uh, we anticipate we'll put it out to bid at the end of the year which will give us six months before we even have to get in there so we have plenty of time to move around so with that um, if you could uh, Sounds like an excellent, the, uh, excellent idea. award to uh, J.H. Lynch, that would be great. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the bid from J.H. Lynch? I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? No, I'd just like to thank you for your, your hard work, Mr. Ringad. It's, it's, you're it's, welcome. A, it's, it's a it's, thankless it's, job, but I'm going to thank you, mm -hmm. and I, I understand what, what, what you're up against here. And. Uh, I think it's excellent that you, you, you put enough thought into it to kind of break it up. So if we have to do some of the work ourselves to get us across the finish line, yeah. so be it. Well, we're yeah. looking at that. You know, Joe, Joe certainly is, is capable and his people are capable of doing some of the work to do that. 
we may end up going back to the DPW too. Who, who knows? You know, there are all kinds of possibilities that we'll try to do. But just by breaking it into smaller pieces, I think we we avoid the big design costs to begin with, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there. We'll figure mm -hmm. this out. That's excellent. I can't thank you enough for the time they put into it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank if I could much. just make one comment, I do want to echo uh, Mr. Scobie's remarks and thank you, Mr. Ringard, for all of your time and energy you put in. They're actually quite a team, as you know, and we sing Joe's praises as well deserved. Uh, he's doing things all the time, but Joe sits on the master plan team as well as school building committee, too. So thank you both. It's very a lot much. of fun. You know, we're able to just kind of work this. What happens at 9 o'clock doesn't always happen at 10 o'clock, but it, 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 it's, yeah. it's moving forward. Mm. It is, so definitely. It is. So, good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Have a nice night. Thanks for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the ice cream, too. <laughs> oh, she's leaving. Sorry. Bye, Nicole. Bye, Nicole. Thank you. Goodbye and good luck, Nicole. Thank you. Keep us updated as to your progress. I will. The next item, I wanted to make you aware, there's there's no urgency around this, but um, in consideration that you may at some point uh, be closing or turning back to the town, Julia Bancroft um, and Mary D. Stone schools, once all of the shifts are made, there is a requirement through MSBA that we provide them notice on that of at least six months. We've been in touch with the representative, um, had discussions with them, there were forms to be um, completed, Mr. Gray and Mr. Fay, you were part of those discussions. So we're keeping you apprised, and our plan is to start to gather that information this summer, share it with you preliminarily, and um, even before you make the firm decision, we'll just notify them so that we meet their six-month timeline with the understanding that you can pull back should you choose to do so. So I just wanted you to know we are aware of that and working on it. There's, there's no way we can have that set up enough so we can vote on it so we... Well, my recommendation. I hate to vote on something that I don't. I don't have all the stuff I need to vote on it. But um, so through the chair, <coughs> I hate rubber stamping things. That's how I say it. I guess. So I may not have communicated it correctly because you won't be rubber stamping anything. What we'll need to do is just complete paperwork to send to MSBA. Nothing's definite until the okay. school committee takes its vote. Okay. So we just need That's to notify them that there is the potential that we'll be closing schools. Basically, what the MSBA wants to know is. Um, have they supported funding in a school within the last 10 or 20 or maybe even 50 years? There's a time limit. With the age of Mary D. and JB, they're both almost 90 years old, MSBA has not supported any funding for those projects, so it's not going to be an issue. They just want to make sure that a community doesn't build a school, say there's a need, and then 20 years later say we need another school, and we're not going to use this one anymore. They oh, want to make sure okay. that they're using their investment. So um, you actually won't be voting until we know the new middle school is ready, the current middle school is ready, so you won't be taking any votes until all of that happens. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. I suppose that would go for the accelerated repair program as well if they gave you a couple hundred thousand dollars yes. to put new windows in. And then same thing. Close the school down exactly. There, so. Exactly. The same thing. Um, I don't know if you want to take it out of order a little bit, because Mr. Fahey is staying for the accelerated repair. Do you want to yeah, absolutely. move that up? Sure. So if we turn it over to... He's finally getting a rest. Oh, you want another piece of cake? Gary Ellen, he's yeah. finally getting a rest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gray's going to do a lot of talking, but it's a, a team collaborative effort, so I thought that he could feel good. All of you let me? Come join me, Joe. I know you don't understand this. Not budget. <laughs> And in the back of your packet is information um, that deals with this, so you can see. Uh, the first document I'll call your attention to is a letter that was received by the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, which is basically outlines um, and welcomes the Auburn community as well as the Auburn School District to the first of many phases of the Accelerated Repair Program for the MSBA. Um, within that um, letter, I think it's on page two, You'll find some benchmarks of some initial paperwork that needs to be completed, as well as what the MSBA should be searching for. Um, it's the uh, one addressed to. Uh, it's on the reverse side of the sheet. Here. Yeah. I, I say paper. I, I guess it's a habit that I do back to back so that we don't kill too many trees. So. <coughs> one of the first benchmarks that um, the MSBA is requiring is for the district to identify any potential uh, money that would be used for uh, the improvements that we've asked for through the Accelerated Repair Program 
specifically the roof at Bryn Mawr Elementary School, the roof at 10 Swanson Road, and the boiler at 10 Swanson Road. And part of what their requirement is, is just a, um, it's a requirement so that they can see that a town and the district actually have some financial ability to fund these projects as we move forward. And I will stress, and I'm sure you'll hear this throughout the whole accelerated program, this, the word accelerated to the state of Massachusetts means it'll be two or three years. That's accelerated to them. So I know some people hear the word accelerated and they think within 90 days we'll have the roof starting to be worked on. But um, believe me, this is a, a very um, well thought out, documented process where every step of the way will require both the town and the school committee to make a commitment to the next phase, being well aware what that may require. So as I said, the first um, benchmark is um, a response to the MSBA that the school district has some ability either through future or present capital improvement program monies to fund the related um, projects that we have um, asked them to fund. So what I have um, proposed and what I've um, given to Dr. Rinell, of which you have in front of you, is a letter. It says draft. It's dated to uh, Mr. McCarthy, who's the executive director of MSBA. And this is a proposal that we have um, put together looking at what funds we currently have earmarked for certain projects um, in in the past or capital improvement program, some of which, as you can see, um, were, were monies that were already designated for those programs, being the roofs and the boilers at the respective schools. Uh, what Mr. Fahey and I did was we went through and then we looked at other projects that may or may not require immediate funding that we could then send to the MSBA to say that if, if so moved by the town as well as the school committee and ultimately by the voters of the town of Auburn, that um, we would have um, funds available to fund these uh, projects. The um, MSBA, as I said, the word accelerated is misleading. They do allow you between now and the uh, end of 2015 to come up with funding mechanisms. So in the worst case scenario, you'll have at least three town meetings of which you could go before the voters to either ask to transfer these funds and or appropriate additional funds if that is the will of the of the school committee and ultimately the, the taxpayers here in Auburn. But at this point, we've gone through and we've identified current money that's already been funded for different projects and um, providing this to the MSBA as well as giving you the information so that you can see that we are um, certainly committed to following through on this process. On the, the back page, back pages, you'll see that um, what we did was the way the MSBA project works is once we send this letter saying that yes, we have the ability to raise funds and or already have committed funds, the MSBA will then assign to the town of Auburn a owner's project manager. And within that uh, process, they basically, and this is very true, they put the names in a hat and they will pull out someone in the area who is qualified, pre-qualified by the MSBA to provide these services. And they, the, the next phase that will be a requirement of the town and the school committee to vote on will be to fund that part of the process so that an owner's project manager would come in, they would look at the three projects that we're um, recommending uh, renovations for, and then they would complete a feas feasibility study. The, uh, that part of the MSBA program requires that the uh, district and the towns commit funds to pay for that owner's project manager. Um, part, the first part of it is the OPM itself, which is uh, an amount not to exceed $15,000. That's a cap that the MSBA puts on their project. The second part of it is a feasibility study, and that is conditional upon the size and the scope of the building, repairs, and or boilers that need to be replaced. So that is not a defined number, nor is it capped. Mm -hmm. um, what I did the other day was I spoke with our project coordinator, Kevin Sullivan, from the MSBA, and we looked at similar size roofs and similar size boilers that were recently completed as part of the 2013 Accelerated Repair Program to gauge an approximate cost that would cost the district if we went forward into the next phase, which is the um, determination to uh, award money or give money so that we can be awarded an owner's project manager and a feasibility study. Likewise, Mr. Fahey um, has gone out and, once again, this is all 
at this point, just our best guess. Well, how much is a roof going to cost? How much is another roof at a smaller school going to cost? How much is a boiler going to cost? And that's where these amounts came from. These are our best estimates, but once again, to show the MSBA that we do have the potential to pay for these repairs as we move further down the road. So uh, in conclusion, um, this letter is one that we would like you to um, review. Um, it's one that we share with you because it is a requirement, as I said, the first benchmark um, that we have to respond to the MSBA. There is no commitment. This by no means are the final funds that we have designated. As I've stated, this is just to let the MSBA know that we have the funds available if so approved by, 20, you know, by the, the end of 2015. And then, um, as you can see in the second page of that letter, there's a couple other benchmarks that are coming up um, shortly after um, the uh, July deadline on this one where, once again, this is all a very uh, long process while accelerated. And so this is the, uh, the first uh, letter we have to send to the MSBA sometime between now and the July 9th deadline. Just one um, item I'd like to add to it. Thank you, Mr. Gray, yep. um, for that. But, you know, as we went through and brought to town meeting for the repairs and updates to the 10 Swanson Road property, and Mr. Ringard actually presented in May, the commitment has really been to stay within previously appropriated funds, that $1.8 right. million. And, and we're hopeful that we're going to be able to do that, and that is certainly our goal. This um, document here as a draft, we propose that we send this in to MSBA. It's due to them by July 9th. Our next meeting is not until July 9th. So we'd like to send this to them with the understanding that we don't have to appropriate any of this until December of 2015. Now, assuming we could do this, it would require us to put off some projects that we had previously designed, um, determined that were needed. However, we do that because we could save the town half of the class of these. So to put a roof, just to use round numbers, and I'm using a guesstimate, to put on a new roof at the Ob 10 Swanson Road, the current Auburn Middle School, could be a million dollars. So if we can reappropriate funds already approved and not ask for additional money, then we can save the town $500,000 for a repair that ultimately is going to need to be made. Um, I think Mr. Fahey has said it's actually outlived its life expectancy now. Same thing with the uh, Bryn Mawr roof. If we can, if it's a $500,000 roof and the MSBA can contribute half of that, $250,000, it's worth it for us to do that. So um, ultimately, it would require school committee to um, propose warrant articles for approval at town meeting to reappropriate funds. Um, but my uh, strong belief would be that town meeting would support that because of the end result of saving what could be, and if you add the boiler in, three quarters to a million dollars overall in repairs that are ultimately needed anyway. So this is just the first step. We wanted to share it with you and with your approval, um, assuming we get it tonight, Mr. Gray and I will be going to the Board of Selectments meeting on Monday just to update them on this process because it does require town manager's approval as well, um, the initial certification. And if you remember, um, the original um, application we submitted required the Board of Selectmen's endorsement, which um, Ms. Goodrich provided for us. So so we share it with you and, and would seek your approval at least to move forward. There's no money, no financial commitment at this time at all, but would appreciate a vote from you to continue in this process. And obviously we'll do analyses to be sure that in the end we will actually reap these savings. <coughs> and that we'll do, and, and Mr. Gray and, and his um, successor, Mr. Barber, will do that with Mr. Fahey and I, but um, it's it's too much money in savings to not pursue, we believe. I, if I may ask a question, I think I understand what you're saying about the money and the draft and everything, yeah. but if I could ask, what is EMS work? I mm. see it in several places on this. Emergency Management System, Energy, Energy, Energy Management, management Energy Management System work. Okay. Oh, Which takes in? No. Which takes account for air conditioning, heating, ventilation, um, control works, the whole thing. Um, th another thing, too, to consider, too, if I could just bring up that um, the, the town of Auburn has uh, committed themselves to be a green community, uh, and therefore uh, we reap the benefits of, uh, of money 
for grants. Uh, when we originally did this capital, that did not exist. Mm -hmm. So we, we were able to do quite a few projects last year, and we're not doing any this year, but the following year we're going to reapply again. So the money is still out there for, for this type of work. Mm -hmm. So it's not like this type of work is going to go away because it's needed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, as Dr. Mill said, it, it's, it's the best value you know, to move this forward to, uh, you know, to see if we can't get half the funds for those two schools. Okay. And if I could ask one more question. Um, what do they need to do? I see $100,000 for a concession stand. I, where is there a concession stand? Um, Down at the high school and the football yes, field? Or? It's uh, between the baseball field and the all-purpose field. So, uh, when, the, uh, when the high school was built, it was just uh, we, we found out shortly afterwards that we had lack of storage. Uh, so when our capital uh, uh, program uh, came up for, uh, for a discussion for the following year, we felt five years out we should probably put in for expansion of the concession stand for storage. Uh, since then, I'm not saying that it, it's definitely needed. Uh, we definitely do not have enough storage on that site. However, we do uh, we do our best with what we have. We improvise. Uh, we take advantage of every single space that we have. And recently, this past year, we, we refurbished the back of the bleachers uh, and installed, um, I think we have 11 uh, storage containers that have gates and locks. So now they can take all their track equipment, uh, you know, some football equipment, store it in there. Uh, so it's I'm not saying that, you know, that that we don't need that additional storage, which we do, but I guess if you had to weigh out the two, you know, just as I think there's always been a practice in the whole lot in public schools that these uh, principals do is they improvise and do the best they can with what they have. Right. And in this case, it's a perfect example. So it's a lot of storage, not just selling more hot dogs. Nothing to do with hot dogs. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with hot dogs. Okay. It's good strictly for storage. Okay. And, and through the chair, the items that are designated here with the double asterisks, those are examples of ones really to demonstrate to um, MSBA that there is funding available. So a final determination has not yet been made of where we would take the funds, but we, want, we need to show to them, yes, in fact, it has been appropriated, would require transfer, but some of these may, may be shifted. Are there any other questions? Thank you. We need a motion here for now. I would appreciate a motion on this just to go forward, and that way then we'll go and share with the Board of Selectmen just a motion to um, have us continue through the accelerated repair um, process and to continue to pro provide updates to you. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? A second. second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. very much. The next item, the medication designation, this is a uh, form that needs to be signed biannually every two years and has been signed um, in all six years of my tenure, so three times. This will be the third. Um, what it does basically is designates that uh, with training by the nurse that prescription medications, if needed, could be administered by an unlicensed but properly trained responsible adult. It does also include EpiPens and the distinctions that are noted there. So it is my recommendation that you vote to approve this. It would require the signature of Mr. Scobie as chair and myself. Make a motion to approve the medical designation forms and have the superintendent and chairperson of the school committee sign them. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Just wanted to share briefly with you the asteroid program. We put that in place a couple of years ago at the middle school for grade six students after school. Um, it lost, um, it was no longer self supporting. There were actually only two students uh, in there. So we actually did close the program. So I just wanted to make you aware that if um, there is expressed interest, we could certainly open it back up. But we do pay people um, to run that program, and there was not money to do so. The need wasn't there, I would say. The need wasn't there for the, the program? The need was not there, no. We only ultimately ended up having two students in the end who um, utilized it. 
So in your opinion, it would not be worthwhile to bring back? At this we'll point now, until unless there's Last a night. need that's determined from families, okay. we, we would not continue okay. with it. Yep. The satellite and galaxy programs, and I think part of that has to do with the age of students. Um, the satellite and galaxy have been in place for decades, quite honestly, and, and uh, run and have uh, large numbers of students. But I think that when students transition to the middle school, they're a little bit older, so they may not want to stay for a program like that, is my guess. Are there any questions? The wanted to make you aware, Mr. Bouvier has just come in from the third of three iPad um, presentations that were made, and we included a copy in your packet. Um, all the, what will be next year's eighth and ninth graders, as you know, we're going to, each student will have an iPad to use throughout the day and actually to take home. Um, with them each day. It'll be a 24-7 and really make it a technological um, infused classroom uh, in, in their lives, which students are already. Uh, but Mr. Bouvier is also here to give you an update. He and Mr. Gray have worked. Mr. Barber has been involved as well as me uh, in terms of developing the lease for this. So he is here to provide you a brief update regarding if you want to update us on the parent presentation, Mr. Bouvier, and then you and Mr. Gray can seek support to enter into this lease agreement to bring this great innovation to students in Auburn for grades 8 and 9 next year. Sure. Um, thank you. Like uh, Dr. Brunel said, I just finished over at the high school and raced over here. Um, so this was the third and final of our parent information sessions, uh, and we ran through the presentation with, with all um, three groups of parents. We had a good turnout at all three. I don't think it was everybody. We still have some that we're going to have to uh, address, but it was a good portion of our um, parents from our student body. And they were all in all very receptive to the program. We didn't have a single negative comment about it. We had some very good questions, um, all of which we felt we had very good answers for. So uh, I think um, as the last piece of support that we, we didn't have up until this point, the parents, I think at this point we can say that the parents are on board with our program, um, along with the students, and the, you, know, you made it perfectly clear through your votes in the past that you're on board with this program, our teachers, our administration, I feel very comfortable going into next year that, that we've got um, unilateral support in this, this program. So if you have any questions on that presentation, I'm happy to uh, answer them. To be fair, I used most of what presentations I've already given to you to make this one, so uh, you've seen it before, except yeah. for, some, for the new members, so uh, feel free. Are there any questions for Mr. Bouvier? I have one random question. Sure. How do you stop these kids from, like, FaceTiming each other in class and... That's a good question, yeah, and we have a good answer. <laughs> uh, we have a management system in place that every iPad has to belong to that allows us full control over the iPad. We can turn off any feature that we want. So FaceTime being one of those that we will start the year off. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there are several others that will be off until we decide that uh, they need to be on. So we have that control, granular control over every um, every tool that's in the iPad. Oh, okay. So. so we did present, Mr. Bouvier presented a memo regarding, because one of the questions that we had, or items we had discussed back when we first proposed this was, is there ability to sustain this project moving forward? Now we know with the um, new middle school coming online in the fall of 2015, that school will be fully equipped with iPads as part of the MSBA's project. So some of these iPads that we have will be able to shift to the high school, but this plan actually demonstrates that in the 15-16 school year, we'll, all students will have a one-to-one -one initiative of iPads from grades 6 through 12. And this shows the financial obligation of what will be required, taking it from already, um, we would have designated already in CIPs. Do I have a motion to approve the leasing plan for the iPads? Make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. 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 <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moved. And through the chair, I just want to thank Mr. Bouvier. Uh, Mr. Gray, Dr. Lose, Mr. Hanfield, Mr. Gagnon. Um, there have been meetings and a number of teams that you've assembled for this. The one-to-one -one digital learning team, it really is a um, very forward um, thinking initiative that we're going to have in place in Auburn that we really should all be proud of. So thank you for your work on that. Thank, thank you. you.
I think it makes us the envy of towns around us, actually. I would agree. I would agree. We now move on to park. Okay. So the next item, as I had shared with you back in um, a couple of meetings ago, regarding the decision on park versus MCAS, and you've probably been following in the newspaper, as have I and with local superintendents, that districts are making those determinations now, especially before the June 30th, so they can get what they would like. I did provide you some additional um, information in here, some items for consideration, but did want to let you know that as a leadership team, we really did give this great consideration. And as, as noted in the packet here with our pros and cons, the reality of it is the MCAS test as it currently exists is going to be changing drastically because the MCAS is testing on the former curriculum frameworks for English language arts and math. We now have, and, and we shared this with you a couple of years ago, the park test tests the students on their knowledge about the common core. That's what we're teaching our students, so we should be testing them on what it is that we're teaching them. Now, for full disclosure, there were technological challenges that happened this year that were not ours, our problem. They were the state's problem. The state is well aware of that, and they are working on it. Um, we believe, as a leadership team, that to expose our students to, and it is a, a rigorous, I would say probably a more rigorous test, it's a bit more challenging than MCAS, to expose our students to that in a year when the state has said we'll hold you harmless. Mm. If they're level one or level two, we're still gonna remain level one and level two. We could improve, our level two school could, could improve, but we can't go down from that score, from those uh, levels. But I think that we shouldn't shy away from a more rigorous opportunity, especially if it's what we're teaching our students. We should be testing them on that. So um, I anticipate that it will, there'll be some challenges around it, but um, I think our students and our staff is up to it, and we will continue to make sure that the technology is in place. We don't need to decide now on technology. That can be a fall decision. But right now our tentative decision is Let's go with PARC, and let's go with it on the technology base. That's how the test was built. I think it puts our students in the best position um, to be at the best advantage to do well with the test. So that is my recommendation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I thought I had read that once we make that commitment on June 30th, it's a four-year commitment. Is that not? Well, the issue is um, we're going to make a commitment for next year. The Board of Elementary and Secondary Education is going to actually decide in the fall of 2015 whether they're going to adopt PARC. Now, if they decide in the fall of 2015 to adopt PARC, everybody's going to PARC mm -hmm. regardless. Um, if they decide in the fall of 2015 they don't want to go with PARC, and to me, all indications are we're going with PARC. Our mm -hmm. Commissioner of Education is leading this charge. Now, Department of Ed will not say what it's, it's a done deal yet, so we do have to wait until then. But if they decide in the fall of 2015 that we're not going to go with PARC, what they've, what they've stated is that we'll revert to using some assessment, likely the MCAS, until they're able to, re to redo the whole MCAS. Their term is they're going to sunset the MCAS. It's not testing what we're teaching right now. So this is a commitment for next year that we're making. And then the board's actually going to decide for us how mm -hmm. we go forward. And at least that. we would have had exposure to it. Exactly. That's the idea that is way. that we'll yeah. at least have exposed our students to it um, and, and without penalizing them in any way for doing it. Well, I agree with you, Mary Ellen. That's, that's the best way to go because, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get penalized or anything and you can... Right get our students into it right. slowly instead of saying, you know, here you go, do it, you got to do this. And it counts, It makes right. a big difference. Yeah, that, and I did and follow up, right. yeah, I did follow up with the Department of Ed. They are going to continue with MCAS Alt, which is the alternative MCAS for our students who, whose IEPs require a very different type of program. So that's going to continue for them. They do have accommodations that are written in, and they'll be written into Ed Plans. Um, but I, I just think it makes sense for us to, you know, if this is the direction that we're likely going, why not expose our students to it? I would say that that was our theory from the beginning, and that's yeah. pretty much 
what we sold the town on mm -hmm. was that we were on board right. and we thought back then mm -hmm. that this was um, actually going to come to fruition and, right. and, and it probably still will. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it wouldn't make sense, as you said, to teach to the, the uh, test that the frameworks don't align with. Right. right. So worst case scenario, if MCAS comes back, we wait until the frameworks come back to match the MCAS, and I don't think they would make that move until mm -hmm. that was done. Mm -hmm. So I would certainly approve. Would I entertain a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Yeah, she did, yeah. Okay, the next item is <clears throat> we've just updated for you retirees, resignations, and transfers. We continue to do um, to do hiring, and we're bringing on board some some great people, replacing um, some some priceless individuals, certainly who have contributed a great deal uh, to us, and we certainly thank them for it wanted to update you, I had shared with you a couple of meetings ago that the Southern Worcester County Collaborative is considering purchasing the buildings that they currently have, looking at an analysis of what we pay currently in rent and uh, utilities, insurance costs, and what it would cost to pay a mortgage. We recently had a meeting this past Friday, and um, as a board, we agreed that we should delay this decision for now until we get more information regarding the conditions of the buildings what repairs might be needed and make sure that we had a full analysis done before we bring it back to you to make you aware. So it's really been tabled for the time being, but I wanted to let you know that. The, we addressed the master plan, but the tune up and tool up, um, the MASC trainings after the last uh, meeting on the 4th, Mrs. Zotner did reach out to MASC. They are willing, we've included the, the flyer again for you, they're willing to work around your schedules as they have done in the past and would even come out prior to a meeting, say at 545 or so at some point, um, either later this summer or this fall, depending on their schedule, if there was a workshop that you were uh, interested in. So you don't have to decide tonight, but if there are ones, um, we're happy to reach out and, and get that coordinated. Any questions or any interest in trying to schedule something now, or would you like some time to look that over and think about it? I'll probably think about it. Yeah, I'd like to have some time too and think about it. Okay. So, what we'll do is we'll put it on an upcoming agenda. Does yeah. That sounds good. That okay. Sounds good. And maybe, um, what was the last one that we had, or the last two that we had that were pretty similar? Was it a conflict of interest? Yeah. That was really more um, a general overview of roles and responsibilities, and the conflict of interest came as part of that, too. Have, yeah. we, have we had that one, or is that going to be part of this? We've not had that one. We certainly could have that one if we I wanted think, to. Well, I've sat, sat through it twice, but I think maybe the newer members <laughs> okay. too, might enjoy that. Okay. Um, I don't know about enjoy it, but I <laughs> I'm very good at sitting through things, whether I like them or not. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. You know. may be getting a lot of things. It comes from my like teacher to training, you know. <laughs> you have to sit. And <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So we'll reach out and put that on the screen. Sounds good. Okay, great. And now move on uh, to new business. Yes, yeah, so under um, substitute rates, we have we provided here a comparison. And the rate of $70 a day um, that Auburn is paying for teachers to come in has not been changed, as best we can tell, for approximately 10 years. Um, it is my recommendation that we adjust it. It's a slight adjustment to $75, but I think it puts us more in keeping not with all of the area schools, but with some of those that we would be likely competing with um, that you can see here. So it is my recommendation that we make this modest increase in substitute pay. We make a motion to approve the increase in the rate of the daily substitutes from seventy to seventy to five dollars per day. I'll Do second. I have a second? Yeah, a second. Any discussion? I would say that um, at first first I would ask, do you think that seventy dollars um, do you think five dollars is enough? Do you think perhaps we should go go another five dollars? And I only say that because yeah. I know how difficult it is to get substitute teachers, mm. and I know how taxing it can be on our regular faculty if we mm. don't have them. Yeah. I would think that if we went to $80 a day, 
we would be in great shape in terms of getting subs, quite honestly. And it has, we brought this um, at leadership team meetings, principals have brought this up fairly regularly um, that we can't get subs to government classes all the time. And it does create an issue, um, you know, for others. I was trying to be as conservative um, as possible. You did earlier this year, Absolutely. if you remember, increase for nurses to $125 a day. Right. Um, and that had been at 90 so that was a $35 a day increase, which has helped somewhat. The challenge with nurses is that value does not even come close to competing with what they could earn if they worked in a hospital for a day. Um, well, yeah, I'm, so all, still about, makes it challenging. I'm all about being frugal, but mm -hmm. if there's a small pool of substitutes out there, mm -hmm. I, I'd hate to see them going next door to work when, when we could use them, because mm -hmm. in, in the end it's going to affect our children. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I would just ask, off the top of your head, and I hate to do that to you, yeah. how much do you figure we're paying in substitutes per year now? Um, if, if you can't, then that's... I would say probably, I'm going to guess $80,000, somewhere in that vicinity, I would guess. Okay. If I may offer a, a, a thought, uh, Mr. Scobie, to yours, perhaps what we could do is a tiered system that if we did the $80 a day, those would be for certified teachers, mm -hmm. and that way it would be an enticement for people who are certified to do that, and then the 75 for those who are, who are not. It might be a slight yeah, difference, I like that. but I think having the certified is, is certainly a benefit. Absolutely, and I think I think if we increase it to that, I think we may get some retirees stopping in mm -hmm. and seeing us, and, and those are usually the best. Yeah. I'll amend my motion to reflect the recommendations of the superintendent. And second. your second? Yeah. Is there any more discussion? I'd like to ask a question, yes. Um, I think the tiered uh, levels for certified and non-certified is important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I've been there, I've seen the person that came in and read a newspaper and they weren't certified, mm -hmm. they were simply an adult. Um, you have a teacher, they want to work, or a certified person, I think that should be rewarded. I also personally think that a retiree should get more, or an Auburn retiree should get more. And as Grafton does, and I know Milbury does, and a few other districts. You don't have Milbury on here, but I know Grafton does. Um, I certainly because they come in, they know the school, they know the, they know the, they know the way it operates, and I think you might even find a few more retirees coming back if that knowledge and experience was rewarded. We know no better than a retiree, right? right. Right. I've been trying to talk them into coming, but... <laughs> well, I think, I think if we put a dollar figure on that and we had a short discussion, Mr. Lurie may be willing to <laughs> amend that motion I'd like to hear time. what the other committee members think of that idea. Uh, I would assume you'd say $85? Is that, that what you're would talking that about? satisfy? I've kind of lost track of where we went. Where we were... Um, 80 for 75 for non certified. 80 for certified. 80 for certified. 80 for certified. And 85 for, I mean, um, yeah, yeah 80 85 for retirees. I think that would be a good place to start. We could always address this again next year. Okay. See if we so actually. Is, is the committee enjoy. satisfied with that? I'm satisfied with it. Yeah, I think it would be beneficial to get. Retirees and yeah. Okay. We're familiar with the district. We're talking about Auburn retirees. Auburn retirees. Auburn retirees. Okay. Just yeah. Auburn retirees. Just Auburn retirees. Yeah. Just Auburn retirees. Just Auburn retirees. Yes. retirees. Yeah. We just want to make so sure that they're still remember, certified too. Right. If you can remember that motion, <laughs> I do. <laughs> hey, you I started will, it. <laughs> I will amend my motion that uh, we raise the rate from seventy to seventy-five for non-certified substitute teachers, eighty dollars a day for certified substitute teachers and $85 a day for retired certified Auburn school teachers. Second. Excellent. Any more discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you.
And we are quickly winding down. I was actually with... Um, I've been plugging for that since 2010, so... <laughs> from across the Commonwealth today in, in Noah School, in case anyone is wondering, was getting out later than Auburn, just so I know <laughs> that I've been hearing that we are one of the last. Boston does not get out until next Wednesday, and Everett does not get out until Thursday, so... Uh, but the school year is quickly winding. And there's a school system Till Friday. Okay, good. So you guys um, are really plugging on that yeah, page, aren't you? No, yeah. uh, we're all feeling a little bad. So tomorrow is eighth grade graduation, which is always a, a wonderful event. Mm -hmm. And Monday is a half day for students, and teachers will be back on Tuesday as well for a half day. So we all now move That's on all to my report. Yes. All right, business and financial report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first thing is just to give you an update on procurement. Uh, this is a time of year when uh, we start receiving um, results of the uh, French River Education Collaborative bid process. Um, I have uh, included in your packet the results of the copy paper bid, which I'm pleased to report was the same amount as the previous year. Um, we did receive late this afternoon, I believe Mrs. Morin received the office supply custodial and athletic bids, which we will bring to you at a future meeting. Um, my understanding is that the prices are relatively in the same ballpark as they were in previous years, which is always good since that's how we developed our budget. So I'd ask the committee to approve the copper paper bid from the French River Education Collaborative for the 14-15 school year. I'll entertain a motion. Make that motion to approve the copper paper bid from the French River Education Collaborative for the 2014-15 school year. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, the next order of business is our year-to-date budget report. The month of June, I think we run this report, if not once a day, twice a day. You have the uh, version from June 12th. Uh, we recently ran the report today as well. Um, we continue to monitor our expenses as we wind down to the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th. After the report, we still are in uh, stellar financial positions, and we're continuing to make uh, very wise uh, decision purchasing processes towards the end of the fiscal year so that we we'll have what we need uh, to end the year with and begin our new fiscal year 15 budget on July 1st. So if anybody has any questions on the year-to-date budget report. No. And in line with that, you have two sets of transfers. As I said, we are meeting almost on a regular basis to uh, move money around into different budget uh, items so that we're able to then uh, make purchases and uh, make decisions as we get down to the end of the fiscal year. I provide these to you as part of the omnibus um, transfer that you gave approval for. Um, the superintendent and I, as well as in concert with Mrs. Morin in the business office, uh, go through each of these lines, making sure that um, we are uh, transferring funds into those accounts where we're either seeing some shortfalls or we're redistributing funds in order to, um, once again, maximize that budget process so that we're able to make purchases as we, once again, get to the end of the fiscal year. So. I don't know if anybody has any questions about the multitude of transfers that you have before you. Are there any questions? I don't have a question, but before we leave uh, Business Financial, is this your last meeting? Maybe. <laughs> 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 so I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Mr. Gray for his service this past school year, uh, and thank you. Thank you. I would also, and not only that, but you just get chipped out of a cake. Yeah. <laughs> that was for this one there. Oh, that was for both. Yes. Oh, okay. The okay. half that's left is for him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we don't have to clean, clean this up. There you go. No, thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege. I think that, um, as I said, my decision to leave was one for um, a position that uh, awards me for some of my experience and background, but I've thoroughly enjoyed working here in Auburn. I think that. Um, it's a great school district. You obviously, as both the school committee, administration, the superintendent, the leadership team, and the town as a whole, value education and realize how important it is. So it was a uh, breath of fresh air coming from my previous district here to a district that truly appreciates education, and I hope to bring some of that um, goodwill and feeling to my new district, and I certainly hope that in the one year I've been here I've contributed, and then I look forward to coming back for the middle school ribbon cutting ceremony mm, so I can go. see what it looks like besides the pile of dirt that's outside. Of the <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for uh, oh, having nice. me for the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you well. Thank you.
We now move on to policies. The second reading for the school committee reorganization or the organizational meeting, it is my recommendation that you approve it as submitted. I'll make a motion to approve it as submitted. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? It's faster than that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 We do not. Executive session? Okay, let's take I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All, right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Good night, everyone. Good night.